Singapore has stepped up inland and border security after a plot to attack Marina Bay was foiled by Indonesian authorities. Six suspected militants were reportedly planning to launch a rocket from Batam, which is about 20 kilometers south of Singapore. The six men, including the ringleader, were arrested early this morning at various locations across Batam. They're mostly factory workers aged between 19 and 46. They're allegedly from a terror cell called KGR or Katiba GR, and the plot to attack Singapore was hatched with the help of known Indonesian militant Bakru Naim, who's fighting alongside Islamic State in Syria. Bakrun is said to be one of the masterminds behind the January attack in Jakarta, in which eight people were killed, including the four attackers. Security officials fear that Bakrun and other IS leaders are asking their supporters to launch attacks in Indonesia and the region instead of joining the fight in the Middle East. Channel News Asia's Sujadi Siswo tells us more about the terror threat in Batam. We still do not know how big or how vast this Batam terror network, but it exists. And it has existed since uh, Jemaah Islamia days a couple of years ago because we do know Batam remains to be one of the most important transit points for militants in Indonesia from Sumatra, from Java, travel down to Malaysia and even through Singapore. From Singapore, they go towards Thailand and now with ISIS they go via Singapore towards Turkey and then go into Syria. Um, so it has been important. Now it seems that this cell has morphed. Some of them have joined ISIS, clearly. Home Affairs Minister K. Shemugam says that today's news doesn't come as a surprise and that Singapore was aware of the plans to attack us with rockets. He said that Singapore could face attacks from terrorists who try to enter the country or from those who plant themselves just outside the country. And its small size only increases the risks. Well, meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Teo Chi Hien, who's also Coordinating Minister for National Security, says that the news shows the seriousness of the threat that we face. Both ministers say that Singapore is grateful for Indonesia's cooperation and the actions that it's taken. They say both countries have worked closely together to monitor the militants' activities. They also say that today's developments highlight the importance of the SG Secure movement, which aims to help Singaporeans cope with any possible terror attack. A defense expert that we spoke to says that it's unlikely that a rocket would be able to fly the distance from Batam to Marina Bay if the rocket was homemade. But there are other technologies that could be used to carry out such an attack. It's more likely that if you want something to reach, to fly that distance and to precisely hit a specific target like the Marina Bay Sands, for example, then you need to buy something off the shelf. Unless you're talking about a, a homemade rocket that is designed and constructed by uh, engineers, people who know what they're doing, who know how to put a uh, ballistic missile together with a proper propellant, with a guidance system, and to bring that, that, uh, that projectile onto its intended target. Singapore has been staying vigilant given the terror threat looming at its doorstep. But how susceptible is Singapore to attacks from outside the island, as we've seen from this plot that's been foiled? There are a possible variety of threats that could be brought to bear against Singapore society. Uh, and these are based on precedents around the world and what's available technologically. Other possibilities could be um, unmanned uh, drones. There are a lot of drones that are available commercially. And there are drones that increasingly are able to carry significant payloads. Like mo any state, uh, we would be somewhat susceptible because there's only so much you can do beyond your borders. What this simply means is that we have to be psychologically pre prepared, uh, that uh, we need to carry on with our resilience initiatives, and that uh, you know, if push comes to shove, touch wood, if an uh, attack does occur, uh, then we need to bounce back very quickly. And Dr. Graham, how can Singapore protect itself from such threats? And will this change the way we approach our security measures? I think there will be a, a significant adjustment to our security uh, policies and our security initiatives. That will naturally happen as, the, as we come to find out that uh, terrorist groups uh, start to procure new technologies and new capabilities to carry out uh, sophisticated attacks and also these low-tech attacks. What also needs to be done is that we need to keep our citizens strong psychologically. I think that's the best weapon against terrorism.